Hey everybody, Steph Mischuk with KillerSites.com. In this video blog, I just want to comment on a blog post I recently put out, and it's about HTML5. Let me get to the point quickly, because uh, I figure you guys are busy. Essentially, HTML5 has, out of nowhere really, has become a very important technology. And in, and in fact, I think HTML5 is going to soon be one of the most important web techs that any web nerd should learn. And there's several reasons that I believe this, but primarily I'm seeing it on the ground, meaning in talking with people, I hear that the demand for competent HTML5 coders and programmers, meaning that you know JavaScript as well, is growing quite a bit. I was talking, for instance, to my brother who's out in Europe, and he was saying for a company that he works for, which produces mobile applications for Android and iOS specifically, uh, they were having a difficult time filling in uh, work positions for client-side scripters, client-side meaning HTML5 JavaScript programmers. It's uh, it's kind of new. Um, it's not terribly difficult to learn actually, but there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff in there to pick up, and uh, so I can see why there's a shortage of people. Now, what exactly is HTML5? It's the latest incarnation of HTML. Previously, there's HTML4. And HTML5 really takes HTML to a whole different level. As I point out in this blog post, and you can read about it more uh, in more detail at killersites.com, you can see the URL up here. What I point out is that what makes HTML5 very interesting is that the specification the HTML5 specification was put together by people who actually paid attention to what was going on in the real world rather than trying to set up some ivory tower spec as the X HTML people did with the HTML5 groups they essentially said okay first of all how are web pages being coded today and they scanned randomly uh, a million or two million web pages and they saw what people were typically doing with their CSS and their code and as a result of that examination they uh, put together new tags in HTML5 things that would make sense again you can learn more about that if you take check out our HTML5 course um, and other places I'm sure Another thing that they did when considering HTML5 was to actually consider what the most popular browsers were doing themselves. So for instance, the X, uh, XML HTTP object, I think that's what it is, basically the, the object in the web browsers that allow for AJAX to happen. And again, if you don't know any of this, uh, just check out our courses on HTML5 and AJAX and so on. Um, this is something that was actually uh, outside of the specification that the official nerds at the W3C had put out. The, this whole thing that allowed for AJAX to occur. I just popped open a, a screenshot from an old AJAX video tutorial that we put together. Yes, the XML HTTP request object. I had forgotten exactly. You know, anyway, you get the idea. This is something that's now used in all the web browsers, and it's. Uh, but it wasn't part of the official spec. And there are other examples of that, as far as I understand, where basically the people putting together HTML5, they said, okay, let's let's see what the browsers are actually doing. Let's see what people are doing. Another example is inner HTML. Again, this is a very powerful tool. Microsoft came out with inner HTML, and then the other major browser vendors adopted it. So the point is, with HTML5, you saw a very pragmatic point of view. And that's why the subtitle, and maybe this should have been the title of the article, 
HTML5 and the rise of pragmatism. And essentially, I, I would think because of that pragmatic approach that the people behind HTML5 took to put it together, now we see this thing exploding. People want to use it. It's extremely powerful. You can do all kinds of cool things with it that uh, old web nerds such as myself were just dreaming about back in the early 2000s and the uh, early 90s even. So I really encourage you to look at this if you've never looked at HTML5. You're going to be blown away by its power and capabilities. So some of you may be asking, yeah, well, but you know, which browsers actually can run HTML5? HTML5 is not necessarily the best solution for a very public site, but the great news is that uh, all the major browser manufacturers, whether it be Google Chrome, uh, i.e. Internet Explorer, of course, being still the dominant one, Firefox, and others, Opera, etc., they're all pushing people to upgrade their browsers on a regular basis. This is unprecedented where they're really pushing now people, come on, let's, let's, let's forget about the old browsers, let's get some new browsers so we can do some cool things with the web. So there you go. Uh, so I think that HTML5 will, be, it's already become extremely important and it's become even more important uh, as browser adoption continues to move quickly. And uh, you're going to see also HTML5 and the related technologies. And I'll get back to what I mean by that, by related technologies. This is quickly replacing what Flash did. I think Flash is pretty much a dead duck, especially since I've been looking at more detail what you can do with HTML5. You can create video games with HTML5. You can create all kinds of rich apps. There's threading. There's all kinds of crazy things you can do. In terms of the related technologies, HTML5 is uh, a name that they apply to many different things. Uh, well, not many, several different technologies. So when you're learning HTML5, you're learning CSS3, you're learning HTML5, and there's some other sub-projects, and I, I'm not a total expert on this, so uh, you, you would have to check out our course. I didn't design this particular HTML5 course, although once I have something to say, I'm going to do others. Um, yes, so it's sort of an umbrella of technologies, if you will. But nonetheless, it's, uh, it's something really cool. And it actually changes uh, some fundamental thinking of mine in that years ago, in 2005 or 2006, I spoke about the, the pillars of web design, if you will where I cited the most important technologies in web design in order of importance, HTML, CSS, and then I said PHP and JavaScript. Now, people will be wondering why PHP? Well, again, not to revisit the whole argument, essentially, I said that, you know, all websites require some dynamic components. You know, what website doesn't have a blog installed or a shopping cart or contact forms, all these type of things are built with PHP, or they can be built with Ruby, it can be built with .NET and others, but PHP by far and away is the most popular for small and medium-sized projects, although Ruby's catching up, uh, well, slowly. So that's why I, I argued back way back then that even web designers should learn at least a little PHP so that, a little PHP so that they can go in there, modify code, make changes, and so on. Now, and at the time, JavaScript was basically a support technology. You did a little bit of DOM scripting, DOM scripting. Again, if you're not sure what it is, you know where to go. Or uh, you did a little bit of AJAX maybe, uh, and maybe some form validation, but that was more of a fallback. You still had to use uh, something like PHP or Ruby to, to really do all this stuff. Anyway, fast forward to today, 2012, and looking forward, JavaScript is the primary language used to manipulate uh, the web browser and to interact within the HTML5 environment to use JavaScript to do all the real cool stuff, or well, a lot of the cool stuff. So all of a sudden, JavaScript has become many, many times more important. Add on top of that, that you have Android devices, iPhone devices, and even Windows 8, where you can build HTML5 apps directly for the OS, 
uh, it's it's very cool so all of a sudden you're gonna see uh, when Windows 8 comes out in I believe it's October of 2012 it's scheduled and it looks very interesting I think Windows 8 could be a game changer for Microsoft uh, I'll save that for another video but anyway point is HTML5 is right there and it's built into the core operating system so not only do you see HTML5 in all the web browsers the major web browsers for your traditional desktop web browsing you see it you know on Windows Mac OS you see the Android Android phones and tablets iOS iPads iPhones and now you're gonna see it in the core of Windows 8 within their Metro they call Metro UI user interface so it's extremely important so if you're looking to get into the game you have to learn you know a web design you can't just go out there and be a Dreamweaver user or a uh, expression web user you really if you want to be competitive and get the jobs and you will get the jobs you gotta learn your HTML your CSS you gotta learn your uh, HTML5 and JavaScript and you gotta learn your PHP as well and uh, that's about it I hope you found this video blog interesting you wanna learn a bit more about what I'm talking about you can check out this article here HTML5 and academic shields and meh, I talk about what I just spoke about here maybe a few more details that's about it I hope you found the video enjoyable.